I am right now more than excited <laughs> about welcoming our next guest, Sister Minister Linda Isaiah. God bless you, Pastor So Bats. glad that you're here. Thank you. Thank I've been you. looking forward to this, um, this meeting today mm -hmm. and being able to talk with you mm -hmm. because I just have to tell you, I know a lot about what God is doing. I'm hearing things, uh -huh. and I want our TV audience to hear what God is doing, but can you just tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and... Okay. and, and well, <clears throat> my name is Linda Coleman Isaiah. Mm -hmm. I am uh, an only girl of seven boys, and I'm always proud to say that. I should say seven men. I'm from a little town called Waynesburg, Ohio, mm -hmm. and... Um, I'm proud to be an only girl. <laughs> I get special treatment, and my brothers are crazy about me. Amen. Um, I've been saved since I was eight years old, and I love the Lord. Um, and even in my salvation, my salvation came out of a lot of pain. Even at eight, I knew I was in need of a savior. I knew my life was different than the other kids in the neighborhood. And so uh, I have walked with the Lord for a long time, and I've been faithful in that walk with mm -hmm. the Lord. And I say that because that can happen. Okay. You know, we have young people today who think, you know, you're saved when you go off to college, you, you know, it's just natural for you to do certain things. Well, I made a different choice and I chose not to do certain things because I wanted to live for God. So you were brought up in the church? Well, uh, my mom was a Christian and my mom took me to church. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily my brothers, but I went. Mm -hmm. I went to Sunday school. I had uh, my next to the oldest brother used to walk me up to a Methodist church for Sunday school and then bring me home. Mm -hmm. And then my mom got saved and then we started going to a Baptist church. Okay. And so I went with her. Your dad didn't go? No, my dad did not go. My dad did not know the Lord. Um, he was a, a part of the pain in my life as a young girl. Mm -hmm. um, but I thank God for him. Being 56 and looking back, I'm thankful. Okay. I'm thankful because you ought to be able to get to a point in your life where you can forgive and see the good and not all the bad. Well, we got we, we to stay there a little bit. Okay, all right. But, but you're okay. married. I'm married. I have, I'm married. Uh, my husband is Errol, Reverend Errol Lewis Isaiah. I have a 10-year-old son, and uh, you guys can do the math. Uh, he is a blessing. I've been married for 31 years, and I'm proud to be married for 31 years in this day and age. Amen. 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 Sounds Amen. like there's a story behind there. There's a story <laughs> behind that, too. There's a story behind all of it. Amen. But, but God has called you into the ministry. Uh, yes, yes. And tell me about Linda Coleman Isaiah mm -hmm. Ministries. Linda Coleman Isaiah Ministries was birthed out of my own misery. That's what's become my ministry. Out of my own pain in my childhood, my own pain in my womanhood, in my marriage. And I just had a heart. Everywhere I went and ministered at, there was always a line of women that seemed forgotten about. That, you know, that it seemed like nobody could want it to help. They just had problems and they were deep-seated problems. And I felt called to that because I was one of them at one time in my own life. Where I just felt like, it just seemed like, I don't care what I did and how hard I tried, there was always another obstacle, another obstacle. But God was shaping me. Me. And one of the things the LCI ministry is, it's a practical ministry. It's one, I talk, talk very real about my own life and my own struggles. I don't hold anything back because I want women to understand that if God can use me and he can do something in me, he can do it in you as well. So, but, but you would admit that you've not always been able to talk about some of the things you've gone through, have you? No, I have not. It's been a journey. It's been a journey and... A rough journey. A rough journey. And there was a time I didn't know mm -hmm. that I was crazy. Mm -hmm. Everybody else knew I was crazy. It was like the woman with the issue of blood. You know, she knew she had an issue. They knew she had an issue. I knew I had some issues, but I didn't realize that the people behind me were dying and I was still walking on because of my own pain and my own hurt. And so I sought out help for myself. And I said, God, I'm reading the Bible, I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm going to every group, I'm doing everything, but I'm not getting well. Something is missing. So I made a decision that I needed more help. I needed some intense counseling. I wanted to be used by God, but I didn't know how to get to the other side because my unforgiveness had become a badge of honor for me. And in, and in the church, 
if some certain things have happened to you, like sexual abuse and all those things, it becomes a badge of honor. No, you are not forgiven. You are not to move on. You just stay right. You deserve to. No, you're the one miserable. You're the, you're the one miserable. You're the one in prison, not that person. So tell me, look, mm -hmm. because I want to talk some more about this. Okay. LCI. LCI. It's mission. It's mission. LCI Ministries' mission is uh, uh, first to help women who want help and to give them hope, to infuse hope in them in whatever the situation in it is in their life. That God is more than able to do exceeding abundant what we can ask or think. But because of our own issues and our own pain and our own rejection, we don't see him as a father that loves us enough to do and to, and to rescue us. Because your daddy didn't rescue you, is God going to rescue you? So one of the things that LCI Ministries does is I'm able to embrace women and pray for them and love them and encourage them. And I thought having a ministry, which God called me to, would get a group of women together that we can be real with each other. And it's a cross section of women from young to mature to black to white. It's not just all black mm -hmm. because God has blessed me mm. and it's a blessing mm. to be able to cross over. And I can cross over without any problem. So these issues that women are going through yes. has nothing to do with the color of your skin, no. how much money or That's no right. money you have. That's right. It hits all stratus. Of all women are hurting, and they're hurting. Past the bus, they're hurting in the church and in the body of Christ. Yet they're ministering, they're working, they're taking care of children and the husband, but they got this deep-seated hope of hopelessness. Okay, and so let's talk. You, t you, you shared the mission of LCI. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Give me the purpose. The purpose of LCI is to reach as many women as we can for the gospel, for the kingdom, to win the world one woman at a time. And there are times I'm with one woman, there are times I'm with, with 50, I'm with 1,200. It depends on where the need is. Mm -hmm. And whatever it takes is what LCI Ministries is willing to do to help that woman. Now, I've heard about your conferences. Yes, and, God is good. And, 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 and you talk about hope. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you see when these women come together. What are you seeing as, as, as women come to you? Mm -hmm. For what? For what? I think women see me as a person who has been there and is there. Mm. I think they don't see me as being on a mountaintop. They see me as quote unquote normal, and I am. Mm -hmm. But all everybody is. But they look at other folk and they think, you know, they live over here. They have this. But I'm just a regular old kind of girl. I got problems. I got issues. You're not looking down. I'm on not them. looking down. You poor people, right? Who need help, right? You can relate. I can relate. I can go there with you. And when I see them, I, I God gives me a prophetic vision to see where the pain and the hurt is. And one of the things that I pray, Pastor Butts, when I minister is, God, show me the hearts of the people. Mm -hmm. where, where are their pains? Where are their disappointments? People have such disappointments that they've never let go of. Why is that important as, as in your ministry? You think that, prophet, that prophetic uh, discernment mm -hmm. that you have, um, why is that so important as, as women come together and mm -hmm. you, and, and I, I've heard about the things that are happening in mm -hmm. these conferences as women come from all over, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me why that's important to see inside. I think it's important because women don't always, even though they say women communicate, but women keep a lot inside because we live at a time and in the church where you, you, you need to do what you told and you basically sit down. And if there's a problem in the marriage, it's usually your fault. It's not his fault. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they come and they're wondering, can I really share what's going on in my mm -hmm. household? Mm -hmm. Can I really share the struggle? Mm -hmm. And all I do through the power of the Holy Spirit is create an environment and an opportunity for them to be able to trust somebody and to be able to spill that thing up out of them. And it's a safe place. And it's a safe I'm place. I'm not going to be judged. You're not going to be judged. Criticized. Criticized, treated badly. It won't be spoke of again. And then the, because of that, there are other women there who have the same issues and they end up getting together and supporting each other. Mm -hmm. See, I think one of the things LCI Ministries does when it says hope, it gives you, the thing, you have their choices. Mm -hmm. God has given you choices. Mm -hmm. See, see, Linda, you would, 
you sound so hopeful. Yes. And somebody is sitting out there right yes. now watching, yes. but you ain't been through what I've been through. Yes. You don't know. Yes. You look too good. You dress yes. nice. Yes. Yes. You look nice. Yes. Uh, you're smiling. Yes. Yes. You can't relate to what I'm going. There's somebody out there. Tell. Can we go back to eight years old? Can we talk a little oh, more about absolutely. that? Oh, absolutely. Tell us about this where, because I don't want people to misunderstand. Yes, yes, because I'm know dressed what you're up. It's because I'm on TV and I'm supposed to be. <laughs> 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 but, but my dad was abusive. He was an alcoholic. He, he beat me. He beat my brothers. There was sexual abuse in the family. He abused my mother. And, and then uh, I, I grew up being very afraid, very afraid to move into certain areas of my life, having issues with men. And when I say having issues with men, I don't mean in the sense that I didn't like them, in the sense that I didn't know what to do with them. Mm -hmm. Because where I came from, my dad, he, you know, he was a, I can't say it on TV, but he didn't play. He was like E.F. <laughs> Hutton. When he spoke, you had to listen. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So coming through childhood with all of those issues, going into college. And when I went into college, my goal was to get my master's degree, move to Washington, D.C., be a principal, and raise a child without a husband because I didn't see a need for one. Tell me what was the beginning part of your breakthrough because I heard you say your ministry is one very practical yes. some hands-on tools yes. what do I need to do yes. uh, uh, what was your what was the key element to get you out of this probably the key element is when I came to the house of the Lord under the direction of Bishop F. Josephus Johnson because it was a very practical ministry that began to deal with very practical things that I had never heard of before in the church. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of catapulted me into, because it was always a ministry of searching yourself. Like uh, Psalms 51 self says, search me and try me. And that was the kind of ministry it was. So because I was in leadership, you had to dig a lot. You had to dig and look at yourself and dig and look at yourself. And as we began to unturn and unearth some things, mm -hmm. that's one of the things that LCI ministry does it unearths things mm -hmm. brings things up and when it came to the surface and I saw what I had and I saw that I was married and I wasn't happy in my marriage but I had a good husband mm -hmm. I said something's wrong with me mm -hmm. that I can't relax and enjoy the relationship so in that I made a decision to go to counseling and then go into counseling I admitted myself I admitted myself into a psych hospital I love saying that because I'm proactive mm -hmm. you know anybody had to come cart me off I knew I had problems mm -hmm. and from the hospital moved into one thing to another and I have built over I built on it for the last 20 something years of my life that brought me to the point to say I want to help women more. So you are a living witness. I'm there a living is witness. forgiveness. There's forgiveness. There's healing. There's healing. There is deliverance. Deliverance. There is hope. There's hope. And even as I sit here right now with you, Pastor Buds, I am in the middle of a struggle. Okay. Mm -hmm. My husband just was fired from his job two days ago. Mm. Mm. Now, somebody I'm talking to is sitting where I'm sitting. Amen. Amen. Okay. And they feel like there's no hope. What are we going to do? We don't have health insurance. But I believe that they that wait upon the Lord, Amen. hope in the Lord, mm. shall gain new strength. And my hope is in mm. him. And that you shall mount up like wings as an eagle. And when an eagle stretches out his wings, past the butts, it's about 70 to 90 inches in a span. Mm -hmm. And that when the wind gets underneath him, he just soars. Listen, I know we need more time. <laughs> we have to do this again. Amen. Listen, if you're watching today, the prayer lines are open 888-731-1000, 888-731-1000. Listen, thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. I pray somebody was helped. 